My lab works on inflammation and inflammatory diseases and the mechanisms underlying those diseases and our latest discovery is potentially a new medicine to treat many different inflammatory diseases including things like MS, sepsis, Alzheimer's disease. I've spent 30 years almost at this game. I began in Trinity interestingly as an undergrad working on inflammation and that was in 1985 terrifyingly. So it's a long game for me. This is the best thing I've seen in many ways because this is a real medicine and the dream for, for me for the past 30 years is to treat patients ultimately with these horrible diseases and this discovery really takes us a step closer to that so I'm very excited about it. There are some medicines for arthritis for instance or MS out there at the moment but some people don't respond and they sometimes don't really slow down disease progression. Our drug we hope will slow down progression and the second big thing is of course our drug might be safer and many drugs often have side effects and one example is our drug will, will have a half-life we call this of about a half a day and that means people can come off it if they get any side effects and then not, not suffer from those side effects and that could be a real advantage we think. And we've got this key target called NLRP three which seems to drive all this nasty inflammation and then goes wrong in all these diseases and we can image it we actually see it in cells and here we have a great picture Rebecca Cull who is the lead author on the paper it was a very talented postdoc in my lab who did lots of this work generated this image and as you can see here there's a big red dot and that there amazingly is NLRP3 with our drug binding it, you know, so we can really image the whole complex. And that's a very inflamed cell. That cell has gone crazy now, if you like, and generating all these nasty byproducts that then cause all the injury in something like MS. We're very keen to get this into patients quickly. And we know it was originally a Pfizer compound, interestingly. And we know from them that it went into humans at one point and was pretty safe. And that gives us real optimism now because many drugs fail because they have side effects. So we're very keen now to get to humans quickly. And we're talking about what might be called acute inflammation. So diseases like gout, for instance, might be the first place we'll try in the clinic. But then longer term, then to try these more chronic diseases like Alzheimer's, it'd be brilliant to do a clinical trial in Alzheimer's. And that's where we're going next. A good sort of a, a example that you might compare this to is a horse race and you have fences to jump. Now you can fall at any fence. It's a miserable business for drug discovery because you can fall at the last fence. And as the horse runs, it gets more tired, kind of. You know, We've jumped a fair few fences with this already. So with the acute situation, we're talking two to three years, which is which is optimistic, but we're not, you know, overstating it. For the more chronic diseases, it could be five to 10 years. These projects are really multinational projects involving many different labs, you know, all over the world. And a really important collaborator is Matt Cooper in the University of Queensland. He made the medicine for us. And then we've got helpers in Bonn and in UMass, for example, and they have various approaches and techniques they use. So it really is a combined effort of six different labs around the world with us as the lead.